So the real technical challenge is uh, that we've got a, a, a significant water depth up to 2,000 meters. We've got a, a, a low pressure reservoir. Um, and those two coupled together mean that we've got to have a, a subsea separation. We've got to have uh, artificial lift. To have that artificial lift, uh, we've got to have the big manifolds and MOBO case on ESPs, subsea. Uh, we, to power those ESPs, we need large and high power umbilicals. And because of the water depth, we, we need to have uh, different design, new design risers to be able to cope with, with a water depth of, of this magnitude. So subsea te- separation is a new technology for shale. Um, the reason that we need it is because we don't have enough energy in the reservoirs to lift the oil all the way up to the surface, to the FPSO. It's a challenge because electrical submersible pumps are not able to pump oil and gas and water at the, all at the same time. They're only able to pump liquids, oil and, oil and water. And so the, the challenge, why we need separators, is we need to separate the gas from the liquids so that the gas can rise on its own, but then we can pump the liquids. And so, so the real challenge is going to be making sure that these separators work efficiently, that we're not allowing gas to slip around into the pumps because we will have very expensive uh, pump failures if we start trying to pump gas in with our, our liquids. So the benefit to future projects uh, by learning to do this subsea separation um, is going to be big for Shell in Brazil uh, and other places where we have heavy oil uh, reservoirs. On BC-10 with the Espirito Santo, we've got the world's first turret moored deep water FPSO using steel lazy wave catenary risers. Now, in simple terms, instead of having a normal catenary riser from the FPSO to the seabed, uh, we've put in a lazy wave and that decouples the vessel movement from the, from the touchdown point on the seabed and that reduces the fatigue and stresses on the system. For the subsea infrastructure to operate properly, we need to run umbilicals. And what they are is tubes that go down to the valves and to the manifolds and to the wells. And primarily, they provide uh, chemical support so we can pump inhibitors and demulsifiers and things like that that we need to enhance the flow assurance. We also be able to uh, transmit pressure to be able to operate the valves and we also have temperature and sen- temperature and pressure sensors that we need to be able to conduct electricity through these tubes. For the high power uh, ESPs, electrical submersible pumps, those big 1500 horsepower pumps need an enormous amount of voltage to be able to operate. Uh, if we didn't develop this umbilical cross-section which combines all of them, we would have had to run multiple umbilicals, which is very, very costly. There's a l- limited number of slots that we can pull the umbilicals into the FPSO with. So what we wanted to do is put them all together into one cross-section. It's never been done before. The, the three big technologies, which have been the subsea uh, separation and artificial lift being one, with the steel lazy wave catenary risers being two, and the uh, electrohydraulic umbilicals. Developing those and, and those being a success on BC10 uh, will allow us to look forward to other deep water projects in Brazil and elsewhere. Okay, so we're, we're, the, we're at the top of the accommodation block. This is the blast wall. So we're behind the blast wall. Uh, so that's why we don't have to wear PPE because we're behind the blast wall. Uh, you don't have to have hard hats and PPE, okay? Well, I, th- I think when you step back and look at the whole project, it's magical maybe. But when you're in the middle of it working every day, you forget about all that. You just get, you just get your job done, you know? And, and the goal is to get it done safely and get it done uh, on budget if we can. When you leave your family, it's always difficult. So you get out here and the first couple of days are kind of difficult getting adjusted. It's also, like you say, it's very intense and a lot of responsibility. So there's a lot of very long work hours. But once you get in the process, it becomes routine. And so the time goes by very, very, very quickly. And the, uh, the work is really interesting. So once you get over the fact that you're away from home and, and all that, then it's, it's pretty interesting and, and the time goes by very fast. So this location is probably the, the, the location where you can probably get a grasp for everybody's input to the project the best because you see it all coming together, right? So you've got the pipeline vessel that's coming in. That's a bit of work that's lasted for years, making preparations, design, buying material, and now it's in the final installation mode. We've already, inst- we've already installed the umbilical, so that work's finished. You know, all of the uh, subsea equipment that was built in Brazil, that's all, it's all been installed on the seafloor now, but that was a huge amount of work that's finished, except for commissioning. And now we've got this vessel that was done in Singapore, 
Now it's been brought on site, it's been installed, and now we're doing the final hookup, and then we'll start commissioning all this equipment uh, in one location. So probably this, this is the best location to get a feel for everybody else's input, you know, and it's a huge input from all around the world. It's, 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 it's good for me to be part of this. I've done projects similar to this before, and you know, I've never done one in Brazil, and this one's uh, it's got some unique aspects about it that I haven't, uh, that I haven't been involved with before, so it's, it's, it's a privilege to be working on this project. It's, it's very interesting, so, so it feels good.